Can you please introduce yourself and the film that you have here playing at the festival? Yeah, my name is Karin Nugroho and I am from Indonesia. And my film, uh, is the title is uh, The Memories of My Body. Mm -hmm. And screening yesterday in 25 uh, February and then 28 and in Pate and mm. then to another cinema in 21 and 1 uh, Feb uh, February. Mm -hmm. The film is about an Indonesian dancer yeah. and the film is called Juno, yeah. like Arjuno, but yeah. I think like in real life the story is based on an Indonesian dancer called uh, Rianto. Yeah. Uh, can you tell maybe a little bit about who is Rianto, what kind of dance does he do and why did you want to make a film about that? Yeah, um, Rianto is uh, one of the best choreographer, mm -hmm. also best dancer from Central of Java. The name of the village is uh, Banyumas. Mm -hmm. And Banyumas is uh, very popular because of the sources of what you call uh, Langer. Langer is a type of dance that masculine and feminine is mixed together. And I have uh, become friend and also dramaturg for uh, s uh, two of uh, choreographer by Rianto as mm -hmm. a dramaturg, and then we always have a discussion. And I came to uh, his village, and then I think it's become one of the wonderful idea if I can uh, express what you call the masculine and feminine issue in my country because yes. this issue is very sensitive mm -hmm. because Indonesia is with the 256 million and 80 percent is Muslim yeah. the issue about LGBT or masculine feminine has become the sensitive issue but I think it is important because part of the history uh, performing art or done in Indonesia is always included there as a natural way of expression is how the masculine and feminine is live together like that. And in your film you show how Rianto, or in this case yeah. Juno, yeah. grows up and discovers these arts and yeah. also discovers the masculine feminine overlap yeah. in some ways. Yeah. Was it difficult for you to uh, make this film or tell a story like that? Because as you say yeah. yourself, yeah. it's a sensitive subject. Yeah, but I think if you saw about 12 of my film that screening in uh, Rotterdam Film Festival, all of them is always about the sensitive issue yeah. in my countries. For example, uh, the last film is about Sukio, the period of colonialism in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I, I make an epic film about the first what you call peace hop in Indonesia. Yeah. And it, I think, become the first film, epic film, that present a hero, quote by quote, from the minority, for example. Mm -hmm. Or I make a, another film, epic film, about Chokro Aminoto, who has become the teacher of the nation. And mm -hmm. he have a, three students. One has become a founder of Communist Party. Mm -hmm. The second one has become a founder of National Party. The third one, the student is, become what you call the development of radical Islam. <laughs> and the three of the students fighting together, wow. even yeah. they sleep in the same room with the teacher is Chokra Minato. Chokra Minato is Muslim. Mm -hmm. That I will say that the Muslim leader in the old days, the teacher of the Muslim is so much open-minded with all issue about ideology. It means I always, always what you call, take a story or take an idea that try to make a statement about the sensitive issue. I feel with Memories of My Body, you yeah. do that as well. It's yeah. a very politically yeah. charged film. Yeah. It also has to do a lot about political elections, about the end maybe of Suharto's yeah. uh, reign or regime, yeah. as you might say. Can you talk maybe a little bit about this specific time in Indonesia, about what Indonesia politically was like when uh, Rianto was growing up? And how did you want to include that in the film? Yeah, I think uh, Rianto, uh, growing up in the era of uh, Suharto, yeah, in the era in between uh, about uh, 70, uh, 60, 60 to 1998, you know, and 
this era is more military regime, you know, and of course, it's very difficult to express um, of the perspective of uh, freedom of expression. You know, it's very difficult. It is very, and also at that time, uh, Suharto is uh, always say no to the communist issue, a yeah, communist issue, and this is everything related with the communist will be banned. Yeah, and in this case, and the censorship is very strong. It is why uh, not so easy to tell story in that era at the time. But I will tell story about the development of uh, Rianto from child until become teenager in that era. But also, then in the ending of the film, I tell story about what is the time after the short of Holdon. The time I think still the same. Now in Indonesia, in this period. It's the election day, yeah. yeah, and all the issue is always be careful with the issue about communism, mm -hmm. the sensitivity of issue of uh, LGBT is still the same issue until now. This is the why I make this film, what you call, it's more uh, uh, make a statement. Yeah. By telling the story of the past, you reflect also on the present, yeah. which is fitting because uh, Rianto himself is also part of the film. Yeah. You see, on the one hand, Juno growing up as a boy, yeah. and then you see Rianto as a man yeah. talking about his life. Yeah. Can you talk about this construction and about working with Rianto in the film? Because it's really beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the, I, at that time, we still yeah. discuss who is can present Rianto when he's still young. Yeah. And if I bring Rianto now, it's too old comparison with Juno as an actor. That's why I use the Juno in that. But the important thing, Rianto as a narration, is then we can get the feeling. We can get the, what you, the honesty of the the was the perspective of masculine and feminine yeah. if you saw Rianto, then we can understand how he deal with the issue of masculine and feminine how his career developed because of the unique things of the faculine and feminine between fair mysticism and beautifulness is together in the in his body and collaboration with Rianto is, I think this is the third time I collaboration uh, with Rianto. And next year also I am become the dramaturg ah, for one of uh, his new scores. Yeah, new score. Uh, the, the title is about Hijrah. Hijrah is the migration. Ah, migration. Yeah, because the migration now is the era of the migration society. And the body is part of the migration itself. Okay. What I thought was a very inspiring moment yeah. is when in the film, you see the childhood of Juno, know, yeah. and you, it's a pretty harsh childhood. Yeah. And then you see Rianto yeah. come in as a grown man, yeah. and he says, my childhood was beautiful. Yeah. Um, can you tell maybe a little bit about what kind of person Rianto is? Because it's a, he's a very fascinating person to look at. Yeah. Now, I've, uh, Rianto, I think, is uh, because he is from the village and he is study in art school, study dance. Also, he stay in Japan. Stay the home is at Japan. It means you can see the ordinary village person, but he also have experience in the global world, you know. And it's become interesting because ordinary people with the Langer done as a sources of his life, then everything is become natural. That if we talk about uh, masculine and feminine, it's just it's like part of the nature. Yeah. And it has become wonderful when we talk with him about masculine and feminine, you know. It's something that part of our everyday life, you know. It is why if you saw the film, you can see the method of the acting is that the acting must be ordinary life, natural, but part of the environment. Because uh, Rianto is also grew up 
part of the environment of his village. For example, he grew up with such father and mother, and he must be cook and etc. Like that. Yeah. There's a moment when the protagonist uh, Juno is a young man, yeah. and he meets a boxer, yeah. and then you have a dancer and a boxer, yeah. which for me kind of shows maybe also a bit of the masculine and feminine yeah. side. Yeah. And what I really love is a moment where the boxer becomes sad because he hasn't been hugged since he was a child anymore. Yes. Yes. Um, can we talk a little bit about that, that emotional like authenticity that is in the film, that expressing feelings? Because it feels quite unique the way that the boxer talks about those feelings. I think it's a good question because this, uh, what you call a small talk yeah, yeah. about uh, someone who must be always hard work not uh, touching, what you call a touching is something, something what you call never, never has become a dream, you know. I think it has become important, important point in this, in this film uh, because so many violence in the world, so many trauma, the body trauma in the world. And what you call touching has become something, something, uh, when I am child, for example, because of issue of communism, for example, mm -hmm. then every time people knock the door, mm -hmm. then we become afraid. Everything becomes something so in the perspective of traumatic. The hand not become too what you, touching and help people, but the hand is become what you, a terror. Yes. And my personal life, I always saw so many blood. I, everyday life, I can see beautiful dance, beautiful song, a multicultural society. But in the end, in Indonesia, always an amok. Amok. Yeah, it's a killing fit like that. In every 20 years, killing fit. And I always experience that, not only because of the conflict, but also because of the, for example, the disaster like tsunami. Yeah. It means I always have experience that I have a beautiful life and the end is amok. Mm. Beautiful life and the end is amok. And I think when Riato say my childhood is beautiful, I think it's, it is important words mm. because life is so many paradox. And the paradox itself is the sources of expression, sources of art. And Rianto can say that his childhood is beautiful, that this is life, you know. Yeah. 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 I have one more question. It has to do about sexuality in the yeah. film. Yeah. Uh, because you, are, you show sexuality in a very frank way, yeah. but you never show it too explicit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's in Juno's life when he is young. It's in later in his life when he grows up. Can you talk about how you approach that or maybe how you discuss that with Rianto? It's not so easy because uh, to be frankly, I, I must be also learn from Rianto, for example, how to appreciate the beautifulness of the body of men. Yeah. <laughs> I must be asked to Rianto, you know, when I saw nudit men and I asked to Rianto, how you can appreciate and you can understand the beautiful thing of men, like uh, like in everyday life, for example. Yeah. Then uh, the discussion has become very interesting. Uh, how, how the what you call, how Rianto is falling in love with men like that, and I try to understand more better and better. And I think all my film is more poetical, more poetic approach. It is why even in, for example, in 1960, I make a film for 1965. Yeah. That screening here, the title is Poet, is more as a, a poetic approach than more than what you call the violin itself. Yeah. Final question. Uh, you've been a big friend of the International yeah. Film Festival Rotterdam. I think in 1999 your film Leave on the Pillow yeah. opened the film festival and since then you've been here coming very frequently. Yeah. What does it mean for, for you to have this film 
memories of my body playing here at the 48th edition of IFFR? I, I, I think uh, it is a good honor, yeah. This is the 50 years of uh, Rotterdam International Film Festival and my film has been about 12 films here in Rotterdam. I think the important thing of the Rotterdam Film Festival is intimate. This mm. is the strong thing of Rotterdam Film Festival and the curation is, can become the bridge between Asia, Africa, Middle East and European. Yeah. And it is because intimate is like the home then people can have time for dialogue and sharing. This is the important, th important thing of the Rotterdam Film Festival. Intimate, the room for sharing and dialogue with a good quality curation. Thank you so much. You're welcome.